Next, let's queer up courts. Federal courts defy DeSantis for the third time in a month by blocking drag ban. A federal court blocked Florida's new drag show law, ruling the state's effort to bar children from attending adult live performances is overly vague and likely unconstitutional. The third time this month that federal courts have enjoined laws backed by Florida Governor Ron DeSantis that concern gender or LGBTQ plus matters. In all three cases, the issues supported by DeSantis, a Republican presidential candidate, lost because the laws appear to infringe on people's constitutional rights. The U.S. District Judge Gregory Presnell of the Middle District of Florida granted an injunction preventing the state from enforcing a law that bans minors from attending obscene live performances, calling it too broad. The judge refused to miss this, the law entirely, meaning the underlying lawsuit challenging it will go forward. The governor's office said the judge was dead wrong and predicted the state would win on appeal. Last week, another judge struck down a Florida rule and a statute that banned state Medicaid payments for transgender health care. That same judge on June 6 partially blocked Florida from enforcing its recent ban on people under 18 receiving gender-affirming care such as puberty blockers and hormone therapy. In both of those cases, U.S. District Judge Robert Hinkle of the Northern District of Florida cited the 14th Amendment guarantees of equal protection under the law. So yeah, big things to celebrate there for sure. And I think what's really interesting here um, is DeSantis saying that he's sure the state will win. So if you're you know, committed to rigging and changing out and only putting people who agree with you, then okay, I guess I see where your certainty comes from. Right. But that's just fascism. That's just mm -hmm. trying to tweak and make our checks and balances only work for one side, which mm -hmm. obviously we're not going to let happen. You know, a few things uh, I'm thinking about. Number one is um, we all were uh, watching with bated breath uh, the way that these laws were coming into the state legislature. We were all um, disappointed and angry, uh, but there is a statement that says, you know, keep calm and let the courts, right? Um, and I, I have to say that that's not always true because you need the right judge, right? Listening to the, right to the court. case, the right court, the right judge sitting in that seat. And mm -hmm. so I'm really excited about the way that the decisions have landed so far, but more importantly, is that this highlights that the governor is wasting taxpayer dollars by spending an entire legislative session on an anti-woke agenda that when it goes before the courts, it fails. And therefore, we have now wasted time, mm -hmm. the time of the legislators, the time of everybody that should be spending their uh, uh, you know, political efforts and lobbying efforts on important issues that affect Floridians and citizens. But here we are now with uh, uh, you know, bills that have failed in the courts, wasting taxpayer dollars all around. And, yeah. and, and it is also, I mean, I, I hesitate to say it, but I'll say it anyway. It's gratifying to see him get knocked down a bit just mm -hmm. because, you know, the ego is so maniacal and annoying. Um, so it is a bit gratifying to see him get knocked down a well, bit. And, and, it's also, and it's also, and it's also, it's it's good for our community, of course, but it's specific to the people who are being targeted by these laws. Mm -hmm. it's, it's gratifying to see them being knocked um, down. I'm, at least I'm curious what y'all think. Uh, one of the big arguments has been last um, last session in 22, um, uh, don't say gay for kindergarten through third grade gender identification studies. Uh, can you show me a kindergarten class where they do that? No, we can't. <laughs> it's just, we're just reaffirming that we shouldn't do that. Well, wait, I, I know Orlando and Save uh, made this observation over and over. Well, you're just going to use this as a springboard to expand, which is exactly what they did in this legislative session uh, to 12th grade. These court decisions have been uh, set aside um, uh, and further review for appeal based on vagueness and constitutional uh, privileges, uh, argument of being overbroad and violation of speech. I'm curious, Orlando, from your uh, seat, what is your reaction in terms of the specific areas of where the judges are uh, working on? Because they created smoke and mirrors on a drag band that never used the word drag queens or any definition in the law. So the judge says this is clearly designed <laughs> to attack drag queens and the law is so vague because they... Uh, what, what do you think about what the judge is saying? So I think that people are, judges in particular, are able to 
uh, speak to the bills and say, we, we are seeing them for what they are about, right? We're seeing past them, we're seeing through them, and we're not going to be fooled. And that's a really important part, I think, of, of this process that judges are really standing up to say, um, it's important to, to understand the what's implied, right? And without understanding what's implied, I think then there's a lot of potential for danger. And so um, the judges are really stepping up in a way that we all expect when we depend on our courts. Um, help us understand what you think will be next. So we have these stays, drag van is stayed, uh, the trans healthcare is, uh, is stayed. Um, what do you think is going to happen next? Walk us through. Well, we heard it, right? The governor's going to push back. He's going to continue to be Mr. Macho Man, right? He's going to continue to put up a fight, um, but he's going to continue to fail. And these continuous failures do not look good for a man who's trying to run for president. And so he can continue to fail. It will not look good for him. Um, additionally, I think that what's going to happen is that states that have followed suit behind him, right? They've taken the leadership that he has taken, and they will start to possibly hold back, recognizing the waste of taxpayer dollars. Mm -hmm. Mm. And and Mateo, I want to ask you specifically in terms of the uh, the stay that we've seen in trans healthcare. You're a member of the community. You're leading as executive director of Aqua Foundation for Women. Um, a, a lot of the the definition of that stay in the federal judge's ruling was equal protection on, under the law. That is a challenge for at least for my seat. That is going to be a very hard argument for the governor to overcome because you make the assumption, the judge's principal assumption is, wait, all people have the same access to health care, and trans people are Americans who deserve health care. And so under equal protection under the law, you can't say they can't have health care because of the sheer identity of the person in equal protection. Right. When, from your seat, what, what are you seeing? Well, to me, it doesn't seem so much that they're arguing that, that trans people don't get to have health care. It's that the, the, that we're not real, that yeah. trans, being trans is not something that should be treated as needing health care. So I think that's the major issue that they're trying to get at. And I also think all of these, a lot, well, almost all of these laws have always included a carve out for intersex people. So they're still saying, yes, we're going to do gender affirming, quote unquote, because it's a gender that the doctors and the parents are deciding to assign to someone who is a minor. They're still going to allow that, but they're not going to allow trans individuals who have been going through therapy and who have expressed this and, you know, want a particular gender expression to utilize that same health care. So I think in our country, we need to really um, reckon with how we deal with intersex people and how we view bodily autonomy and the conditions that people I know have. you don't speak for the entire trans community, <laughs> but I'm going to set you in that seat for a moment. I apologize in advance. Um, uh, uh, this ruling and this decision that happened in the in the in the federal circuit, um, uh, we don't get lots of victory moments for the trans community in the last couple of years. Yeah. Was this that? How did the trans community react to the, this federal ruling? I mean, it's definitely a win. It's a huge win. Um, and I think we are still living in a lot of fear. Um, but this is a really big sign that there's a lot of support behind the community. There's um, what we've been saying, all the medical boards that are have been stating for decades that this is a best practice, that the judges and the courts are actually believing that and believing us and believing our parents and our families and everybody who is saying, I know myself, I know my child, you know, they know themselves, this is what's right. So it's a it's a big victory and it's um, a bit of hope. One other question. Uh, again, you're not speaking for the entire community, I understand. But I have heard anecdotally, even over the weekend, in, in the last couple of days, that a number of healthcare providers that had basically placed uh, trans healthcare on pause restarted healthcare of saying, until this is resolved, we're going to continue in the way that we were doing before where we had stopped because of the law. Is Do you hear that at all, that they're, that basically the spigot of healthcare has restarted? It's it's a little confusing. Um, I mean, definitely some, uh, some have been trying to navigate this with continuing to care in the way, like trying to it makes sense of the laws. So there's still definitely a lot of uncertainty, but I think um, 
people are, our healthcare practitioners are dedicated to care. They're dedicated to serving the trans community. So. Um, one last story. This is a very big story. Yeah. And I want to come back to you, Orlando. The, the issue uh, that you highlight about DeSantis, you know, I hear the argument over and over again, uh, woke comes to Florida to die. He said it many, many times in many different ways that this presidential election campaign even Trump has provided a compare and contrast to me of DeSantis that he's trying to export this ideology to other states. With what we're watching from these judges, is it too early to say that the export of that might not be as successful as he thinks it's going to be? I think so. I think you won't. I, I think that's where we're going, right? I think that that gubernatorial peers are going to see the backlash that is happening with Ron DeSantis. And they're going to say, okay, if this is happening to him, I need to chill. <laughs> mm -hmm. I need to take a step back and not follow his lead because it's clearly not ending up in a good spot. Mm. Right? So they have followed his lead so far, but they can always take a step right back because they haven't gone as far as he has. Mm. Interesting. We are Queer News Tonight, the world's first and only live daily LGBTQ plus evening news show from Happening Out Television Network. In the model of PBS and NPR, we educate, inform, and entertain by supporting the 10 pillars of the LGBTQ plus community. With more than 100,000 a week watching on Roku, Apple Television, and other channels. To keep the stories going, we accept donations with 100% transparency. Stay updated and live authentically with Queer News Tonight.